Party spokespeople, UKIP spokesperson Neil Hamilton. The uh, consultation period for the uh, doc document taking forward Wales' sustainable management of natural resources <coughs> is supposed to <coughs> end on the 30th of this month. Uh, I know that the Cabinet Secretary has had representations from many people say this is a vast uh, exercise given the breadth uh, of the uh, consultation which is going on, the number of issues that, that, that are often very disparate. Um, she has been very good, I think, as Cabinet Secretary in her period of office in consulting and being open to all views <coughs> that uh, have an interest in, in all fields under her control. But uh, I'm wondering whether in view of the pressure which there's been upon organisations you know, like the NFU and the FUW and others to uh, respond to all sorts of other consultations um, uh, and everything else which is going on with Brexit and so on, whether she feels that the time period which has been given in this instance is sufficient to get a full breadth of, uh, of responses uh, to inform whatever decisions which might otherwise be made. Is it possible to consider perhaps extending this consultation period for a little longer? Um, thank the member for the question. Um, I did extend it, as you say, to um, the 30th of September, following representations from the farming unions and other um, environmental organisations. And certainly um, over the summer recess, when I've been attending the agricultural shows and, and doing visits um, in, in both agriculture and environmental um, settings, it, it was very clear that it was, particularly over the summer as well, um, you know, the document was, was a large one, and um, they felt that to make sure they gave the views that uh, would be considered, they needed the extension. So I did um, extend it to the 30th of September. I don't think uh, I'm in a position really to extend it any further. And, the, and one of the reasons is, is, and you mentioned Brexit, is probably Brexit, because I think it's really important we get as many views as possible in um, around regulatory changes, around what legislation we might need. Um, and I need to be ready to go, you know, at, at the probably very short notice. And, you know, we don't have the luxury of time. So, no, I don't think I can extend it. I'm sorry to hear that, but I understand the reasons that the Cabinet Secretary has given. And I know she can't be drawn on the substance of matters which are subject to this consultation. But there's a, a question of, of, of general principle, which... Uh, I think it would be useful to explore here. It's what one of my constituents has, has written to me to say, in effect, that what we're trying to do here is to reconcile conflicting interests, both of which are legitimate uh, very often. And uh, uh, he, he asked the question, how does one resolve local situations in which one important outdoor activity unavoidably interferes with either the environment or with another important activity? even when both are being conducted in a responsible way. Um, this has arisen in this particular instance in the context of uh, access to open water and rivers, and the conflict which might exist between, say, canoeists and anglers. Um, and uh, what he points out is, I think, a very valid point, that instead of having one overarching right which applies everywhere without any exceptions, that we need to have some kind of <coughs> local uh, decision-making which respects the specific circumstances of individual instances. And he says quite uh, reasonably that there are places where 100 canoes splashing and screaming at each other all day wouldn't affect angling, <coughs> but there are other places where the passage of a single canoe, um, which is discreet, uh, disrupts angling for some time, um, and therefore we need to have local decision-making so that these individual circumstances can be taken into account. Yeah, absolutely. Um, that's something that I think we've been holding workshops um, over the summer period, and that's uh, certainly something that's been raised with me. So, we, you know, we need to collectively identify the, the best uh, approach forward. So we can certainly look at that when we have the consultation responses in and they're being assessed. Another important feature of this also <coughs> respects the rights of of, of landowners and farmers. <coughs> Obviously, uh, it's in the interest of those who want to see the, the countryside prosper that we have access as, as widely as possible, and the more people get to understand the ways of the countryside, the better it is for all those who live and work in rural communities. But extending the right to, for example, cycle on, on footpaths in the same way as uh, can currently happen on bridleways uh, offers new challenges uh, about uh, mm. <coughs> the, uh, the riparian land <coughs> uh, and similarly the right to camp in open spaces as, as well and how one, one, one gets there in the first place. So I hope that the Cabinet Secretary uh, will uh, 
try to balance the interests here very carefully indeed, because farming is under pressure in many ways. I think you, the, 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 the pertinent word there is balance, and you're absolutely right. You mentioned canoeists and, and anglers. Uh, you mentioned cycle paths uh, or cycle, cycling being allowed on bridle paths. Um, I have to say, some of the discussions I've had over the summer, um, they want to see a multi-use for these paths. They want to see footpaths, cyclists and you know, horse riding all on the same paths. Others don't want to. So I think you're right, it is about uh, balance. Um, I've had uh, representations around camping. You're quite right. Some farmers, I went to a farm up in uh, the Snowdonia National Park over the summer, where he said there are half a million people visiting uh, this park uh, per year. I want to see as many people as I can on here. Other farmers don't feel um, that way inclined. It's absolutely about getting the balance right. So certainly when the um, consultation closes on the 30th of September, we'll be able to review uh, the thousands, I think, of responses that, uh, I know it's well up in the thousands now, of responses that we will receive. 